Why has Celine, a brand that epitomizes the ethos of quiet luxury, become a hallmark of sophistication in the fashion world? And is quiet luxury, as many might think, not just a fleeting trend? Today, we're set to peel back the layers of this iconic brand to uncover how it transformed from a simple children's shoe store into a cornerstone of high fashion. Under the guidance of visionary designers like Phoebe Philo, Celine not only revived its fortunes, but also redefined what luxury means in modern times. So let's rewind and start at the very beginning with the woman who started it all. The story of Celine begins in 1945, not amidst the high fashion runways, but with a humble boutique at 52 Rue Malte in Paris, specializing in made-to-measure children's shoes. Founded by Celine Vipiana and her husband Richard, the brand was born out of necessity in a world still reeling from the effects of World War II. Celine Vipiana, a visionary in her own right, saw an opportunity to cater to a new market, luxury for children, a concept virtually unheard of at the time. Celine Vipiana wasn't just a businesswoman. She was a pioneer who dared to introduce luxury in a segment as delicate as children's wear. Her unique approach quickly set the brand apart. As the business flourished, the Vipianas expanded their offerings. By the late 1950s, they ventured into women's footwear, signaling the start of a new chapter. This move was followed by a bold expansion into women's fashion, particularly with the launch of a ready-to-wear sports collection that combined elegance with practicality, a rarity in women's fashion at the time. Throughout the 1960s and 70s, Celine continued to grow, adding handbags, belts, and gloves to their product lineup. The brand was among the first to merge high fashion with sportswear aesthetics, foreseeing a trend that would much later dominate the global fashion scene. In 1964, the brand also introduced its first fragrance, Vent Faux, along with a bespoke line of leather goods, establishing Celine's reputation for quality and style. The turning point came in 1987, when Celine was bought by Bernard Arnault and officially became part of the LVMH group in 1996, catapulting it into the global spotlight. This acquisition marked a new era of expansion and innovation under various designers. Firstly, under Michael Kors, who served as the creative director from 1997 to 2004, Celine embraced a more distinctly American aesthetic of luxury, Coors is credited with revitalizing the brand's image and popularity by introducing designs that combined Parisian elegance with his signature New York jet set style. However, despite the initial buzz, Coors's vision gradually began to clash with the foundational identity of Celine. His focus on glamorous sportswear and accessories was successful at first, but eventually led to a sense of brand dilution. Critics argued that while the designs were commercially successful, they strayed too far from the subtle luxury that had defined Celine for decades. As Kaur shifted his attention back to his own label, he left behind a brand that was at a crossroads, struggling to reconcile its luxurious heritage with the contemporary market's demands. This period of uncertainty set the stage for a dramatic transformation. As Celine lingered in a state of identity flux, a new visionary was about to take the helm, one who would not only redefine the brand, but also set new benchmarks for luxury fashion globally. Enter Phoebe Philo in 2008, whose appointment as creative director marked the beginning of a profound era of change for Celine. But could Philo reconcile the brand's rich heritage with the modern demands of the fashion world? And how was her minimalist aesthetic the answer Celine needed to restore its identity and influence in the luxury market? Philo's tenure at Celine is often viewed as a renaissance period for the brand, where her intuitive understanding of women's fashion brought a fresh, clean aesthetic that sharply contrasted with the prevailing trends of maximalism. You know, it's just the process we go through when we see things in fittings, kind of reduce it and bring it, bring it to something that, you know, always trying to twist it a little bit and move it on and, you know, keep an idea of classicism, but for it never to look retro. Under her direction, Celine's collections were stripped back to their essence. Her designs were both revolutionary and respectful of the brand's understated roots, 
showcasing a preference for neutral palettes, luxurious fabrics, and silhouettes that celebrated the female form without overstatement. One of her first major impacts was the 2010 Spring Summer Collection, which has since been heralded as a landmark in 21st century fashion. Philo introduced a line of clothing that was both functional and elegant, featuring high-waisted trousers, silk blouses, and leather skirts that spoke of a new kind of informal luxury. Really just looked at the wardrobe and what felt for me like a, uh, just an easy start, not to confuse things, not to start really with fashion as being the kind of point, but really more about what, what I find are uh, things that we all need in our wardrobe. This collection not only redefined Celine, but also set trends that many other designers would follow in the ensuing years. Philo's Celine was about quiet confidence. The bags, particularly, became iconic under her reign. The luggage tote and the box bag, for instance, were not just accessories. They were statements of a minimalist, utilitarian chic that became synonymous with the brand. These pieces were devoid of logos and embellishments, letting their form and material speak for themselves which appealed massively to a clientele that preferred discretion over ostentation. Her advertising campaigns were equally impactful, often featuring stark, evocative imagery that was as much a celebration of modern art as it was of fashion. Philo's work at Celine was not just about clothes and accessories. It was about crafting an identity that resonated deeply with a new era of luxury consumers who valued subtlety and substance. I mean, I like the word reduced because it just feels to the point. Phoebe Phalo's departure in 2017 was met with industry-wide lamentation. Her influence on Celine was so profound that her tenure is often looked back on as a golden era, a time when the brand not only found its voice, but also spoke in tones that resonated across the global fashion landscape. So this is extremely wearable. It's a great trouser suit. They're beautiful coats. And what's wonderful about her shows is you can't remember what you were wearing before. Once you see it, that's what you want. As Phoebe closed her chapter at Celine, she left a legacy of minimalist elegance and empowered femininity that redefined what luxury means in modern fashion. The era following her saw Celine at a crossroads, seeking to maintain this legacy while evolving to meet new market demands. Before we explore the controversial tenure of Hedy Sleeman and his current direction for Celine, let's first understand the broader context of quiet luxury in which Celine has played a pivotal role. Quiet luxury is clearly not just a fleeting trend. It is actually a lifestyle. It's about embracing an understated confidence where the luxury is in the details rather than overt displays of wealth. At Celine, this concept has been embodied through the brand's focus on clean lines, neutral color palettes, and timeless designs. Under Phoebe, and continuing today, Celine's collections have showcased how luxury doesn't need to be loud to be impactful. The brand's approach to fashion, favoring lasting over transient, whispering rather than shouting, aligns perfectly with the ethos of quiet luxury. It's about pieces that are designed to be worn and appreciated over time, reflecting a sophisticated understanding of style that transcends seasonal trends. This ethos has clearly manifested through iconic pieces like the luggage tote, known for its streamlined design and absence of prominent logos, and the trio bag, which combines clean lines with functional elegance. Under Phoebe Philo, the brand also introduced garments that epitomized this approach such as the oversized cashmere coats and silk blouses in muted tones, each piece reflecting a blend of comfort, practicality, and understated style. Celine's dedication to quiet luxury extends to its choice of fabric and cut, ensuring that every item is both timeless and impeccably tailored. This meticulous attention to detail is seen in the subtle luxury of their leather goods and in the precise draping of their apparel. The focus on neutral palettes, precise tailoring, and effortless silhouettes speaks to a confident, understated elegance that has become a hallmark of the brand. This commitment to quiet luxury has enabled Celine to carve out a unique niche in the luxury market, appealing to those who seek an intimate form of luxury that doesn't need to be declared, 
but is instead inherently understood. Building upon the foundation of quiet luxury that Phoebe Philo established, Hetty Sleeman's tenure at Celine has continued to evolve into 2024, bringing both acclaim and debate. Amidst swirling rumors about Hetty Sleeman's potential departure from Celine, the fashion world is abuzz with speculation. Will he stay, or will his latest collection mark a stylish farewell? As we delve deeper, Hedy Sliman, known for his signature rock and roll aesthetic at Saint Laurent, brought a distinct and controversial shift to Celine. Upon his arrival in 2018, Hedy immediately set a new tone, one that starkly contrasted with Philo's minimalist approach. His debut collection introduced a more edgy, youthful vibe, featuring slimmer silhouettes, a darker color palette, and a distinct infusion of Parisian chic that some critics felt strayed from the brand's established identity. However, his first handbag design, the Celine 16, was a massive hit. This shift was punctuated by a rebranding that saw the removal of the accent from the Celine logo, symbolizing a departure from the past and a move towards a more global, modern identity. His approach at Celine has been equally bold and divisive. His latest 2024 collection, possibly his last, dubbed Symphony Fantastique, was presented off the traditional fashion calendar, a characteristic move for Sliman. Set against the stark and poignant backdrop of the Mojave Desert, this collection encapsulates Hedy's unique blend of cinematic flair and Parisian chic. The collection's dark, tailored aesthetic, combined with retro elements, has sparked robust dialogue within the fashion community, illustrating his capacity to redefine and challenge the conventional perceptions of luxury. This collection has been met with mixed reviews. While some applaud the innovative designs and Sliman's homage to Parisian roots, others miss the minimalist purity that Philo championed. A notable fashion critic commented, Sliman's Celine oscillates between groundbreaking and retro, challenging our perceptions of luxury. As Celine prepares for a future that may see a new creative direction, the industry watches closely. Will Celine continue to build on the foundation Sleeman has laid, or will his departure steer the brand towards a new creative epoch? Whatever the outcome, his legacy at Celine will undoubtedly influence the brand's trajectory for years to come, underscoring the profound impact that visionary leadership can have on a venerable fashion house. What are your thoughts on Celine? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching. Till next time.